I was born in 1934 in New York City and very quickly moved out to our family home in Connecticut, which was a gentleman's farm. And we had a tennis court and we had palms and, and so we were able to be shielded uh, from much of what was nasty in the world around us. One of the very interesting things about my family was that my father and mother came from totally different social backgrounds. And dad always would say that my mother was the most fantastic person, a fantastic woman. And she, of course, saw him as kind of an enlightened person who had been a great fighter, but also who was able to move so easily uh, amongst uh, the most famous authors in the world, most famous cultural people in the world. And I think he was a good father, too. I learned at college to love to read. And I, and I love to read about a lot of things. And I, I just cannot say more to myself and to other people that I want to have my member, members of my family do a lot more reading so that they understand uh, what's going on around them. Well, the University of Virginia was a very interesting time for me because the first day that I was there, I met the man who was going to be, from thenceforth, my closest friend in life, and that was Ted Kennedy. And I think that Teddy probably was the most important influence of my life from that point on. And I was exposed to people that were hugely successful and who were in politics and who I admired and who I thought represented a calling that was uh, important for our country. And so I decided during that period that I was going to get into politics too. With the assassination of Kennedy, I said, I'm going to run. Whether I win or lose, I'm going to articulate uh, these principles that he stood for. I said, this is it. People want to have a chance to work, to feed their families, and that's why I work so hard to keep not only this shipyard open, but to keep many other jobs in California. I think it's right for a young man to fight for his country. But I think it's wrong to be involved in a foreign war in which no national security interest is involved. Vote for the senator who's made the hard fight. I was very proud of the fact that the work that we did uh, with an excellent staff to have uh, the uh, Library of Congress uh, indicate to me that we had gotten more legislation passed than any freshman senator in history. I accepted an invitation by ABC uh, to twice a week go down to their channel uh, in Hollywood and give a commentary along with Bruce Hutchinson. And so we did a sort of a crossfire. And that crossfire was way before any of the other crossfires on national TV. Only insiders can know the whole story. Ex-presidential aide Bruce Christensen, former U.S. Senator John Tunney. They're the only insiders who bring the back room into the public eye. Find out what politicians do, not what they say they do. Watch them, only on Eyewitness News. One of the mantras that I have had uh, since I have become a mature adult, <laughs> let's say uh, since the time I was maybe 28 or 29, uh, is a short quotation uh, from a poem uh, that uh, was written by a poet called O'Shaughnessy. And it's, it's a segment of a verse. And it's this, one man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown, and three with a new song's measure can trample an empire down. And the reason I like that quote so much, because it gives me a sense that if you have the right dream and you have the 
the right tools to effectuate that dream becoming a reality. There's just about nothing that can stop you. I think it's tremendously important for families uh, to stick together. I think I've been very lucky in my life uh, to have an immediate family that I helped create and have a family that I loved and I'm very proud of. I'm very lucky to have a wife, Katinka, who I could never have gotten through the, the trials and tribulations of just living and could never have been able to make myself a whole man without her. And I am deeply, deeply grateful uh, to her and the fact that, uh, that she came into my life and is with me and will be with me forever, I hope. And as far as my children are concerned, there's been a tremendous love both ways uh, with regard to my children. And they have been very, very important to both Katinka and to me. And I have had great love for, for, for each and every one of them. And I'm very proud of the fact that they have lived up to my expectations of what a loving child can and should be. Well, first of all, I was dumbfounded uh, that the board members and the director decided that they were going to build a bridge in my name. Uh, but I really was humble by uh, the fact that I didn't think that it was an honor that I deserved. And now when I go to the museum and see it, ooh, I love it. <laughs> I think that it's so important for people to have dreams. Uh, dreams are a fundamental part uh, of our psyche. And it's a dream that goes outside of your own body and your own mind uh, that gives you the vision to be able to achieve great things. And therefore, I would hope that my children, grandchildren, my progeny will be dreamers at the same time, uh, be willing to uh, try hard to effectuate those dreams uh, with a strong dose of reality. I've sometimes been asked uh, what my favorite poem is. Uh, I have two or three that are great, but probably the best one that I know is something that uh, clings to my heart and to my brain, and it goes like this. Listen to the exhortation of the dawn. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course, by all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For, for yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. And, and I think that in my own life, I have had a destiny that perhaps isn't everything that I wanted it to be, because it certainly isn't. I wish I had done things that I had not been able to accomplish, but, but I did the best I could. And, and all that you can ask from, from a person, I think, is do the best they can. And, and I think that that's what every person should try and do. You, you know, there's no way that you can always shape your destiny. But if you don't make a choice about where you want to be, there's no going to be any destiny. <laughs> <laughs>